Right, so what we're going to look at today in percentage composition is two things you might have to be able to do. Method one is finding out what percentage of a compound is a particular element. So this one here, this ion compound aluminium oxide or alumina, has got aluminium and oxygen. We're going to find out what percentage is actually oxygen atoms, basically, or oxygen ions. The second method is where we're given the percentage composition of something and we have to work out its formula. This one's a lot harder. This is more your mirror excellence question. This is more your achieved question. Right. So we're going to go through method one first. It's nice and easy. The first thing you have to do with these is work out the molar mass of the actual compound. So that's our first thing to do. So the molar mass is going to be two times the atomic mass of aluminium, because there's two of them, plus three times the atomic mass of oxygen, because there's three of those. You're usually given the atomic masses either on a periodic table or in the question itself. So normally this is quite an easy step. So that's our first thing to do. 2 times 27 plus 3 times 16. And I'm going to need you guys to give me the answer there, please. 102 grams per mole. Okay. Now, if you were doing a percentage in a test that was out of 102, you'd put your score divided by 102 times 100 to get it back into a percentage. That's all we're doing here. Wait. There's three oxygens in there, so there's 3 times 16, there's 48 grams per mole of oxygen ions or oxygen atoms in there. Whether it's ions or atoms doesn't matter because the loss of a few electrons doesn't make any real difference to its mass. So the next thing we're going to do is say, well, there's three oxygens. Whoops, sorry. So I've now got two numbers. My three oxygens are 48 grams per mole, so that's 3 times 16. My molar mass of the whole thing is 102. So all I'm going to do is go 48 divided by 102 and then times 100 to make that percentage. Sorry, 47.1%. 47.1%. Okay. Are there any questions about that step? Because that, that should be an easier one to do. Okay. These ones are a little bit trickier. These ones are always used to throw me as a student. Until someone smart said, it's percent. So just say you've got 100 grams. So when we did water of crystallisation, when we put the, molecule, the compounds up the top and then the mass, the molar mass and the amount down the side, if you assume that it's 100 grams, you can do the same thing with this. So we've got carbon, hydrogen and oxygen here. So I'm going to put carbon, oxygen, hydrogen across the top. And... Then down the side, I'm going to put the same things. Mass, so rather than percent, I'm going to call it mass, assuming that we've got 100 grams. I'm putting molar mass just so I'm using the same formula, but really it's atomic mass here. And that will give me my number of moles. And then just like in water of crystallisation, we're going to go to a ratio. So... Where it says percent, I'm going to assume that it's grams. So I've got 52.2 grams of carbon. I've got 34.8 grams of oxygen. And I've got 13.0 grams of hydrogen. Now, the atomic masses I should be able to find on a periodic table. The carbon, 12.0. Oxygen, 16.0 and hydrogen 1.01. So we get those numbers off the periodic table. Then all I have to do is the amount, or number of moles, is mass divided by molar mass. So I'm going to need you guys to help with that, please. 52.2 over 12. 4.25. 4.25. Okay. 
2.18. And this one's going to be 13 again, isn't it? 12.87. To get it to a ratio, we want one of these to be 1, if possible. So we're going to divide by the smallest number. What's the smallest number along here? 2.18. So if I go divided by 2.18 for all of them, let's see if this actually works. Wait, I'm a bit confused as to why you put 2.18. I'm trying to get a ratio, so I'm trying to get one of the numbers down oh, to yeah. one. These are not a valid ratio. Okay? So I should have roughly... 1.99. Okay, which is 1.99 is 2. Did you use the 2.18? To 1. Yes. Because it's the smallest. Yes, that's right. And if you don't get whole numbers here, you have to do something else. So 5.9036. Which is close enough to 6. 5.9 is close enough to 6. So what we do with the ratio is we round to the nearest whole number. If one of them is a half, or clearly a third or two thirds, then you know that maybe your ratio doesn't go down to 1. It might be a 3 to 2 to 5 ratio, for example. Something like that. But if you see those really difficult ones, you'll know them when you see them. All right, so I haven't got one of those today. So that means my formula for this would be... C2 O and then H6. Well, because I know a bit about organic chemistry, I know the real way to write that is C2 H6 O. But then if you don't know. No, it doesn't. You'll normally be given an ionic compound anyway, so you know to go cation and anion. My next step to check that that is actually the correct formula is to see what its molar mass is. It says here that the molar mass of my compound is 46.0 grams per mole. So now if I add up to the molar mass of this one, let's see if it is. 2 times 12 is 24. 24. 24 plus 6 times 1 is 6 plus 1 times 12, uh, sorry, 1 times 16 is 16. 24 plus 6 plus 16 is 46. So therefore, this is the formula for my compound. However, let's say the molar mass here was 92.0 instead. It was 92. Not quite. If it was 92, then it would be C4H12O2. Uh, sorry, O2 actually. You actually double everything inside the formula. It doesn't mean there's two molecules of it. It means but there's twice as much of each atom inside, but otherwise good assumption. Okay, so well done. Alright, so if it was if it was 92, then that would have been the formula for it. It would be a completely different compound. I'll stop there.